Good morning, thanks for joining us. Sorry, a bit of a technical issue there. Um, I'm not sure if it did start or not, but there was a bit of a problem getting it, uh, getting the session started. Hopefully everybody can see what we need to see now. Um, I'm James Pickering. I'm one of the pre-sales consultants here with Pay360. Uh, most of you have probably met me before. If you haven't, hello, nice to meet you. Um, we are running a series of webinars at the moment around all sorts of different things from uh, product specific stuff, from uh, different module overviews to security webinars to you know all sorts of things, basically based on the feedback from you guys. Today's session is specifically around our version 13, um, the new the new product that we that we're launching, the the upgrade product. Um, we've got a couple of guest speakers with us today. We've got Wayne Campbell and we've got Adil Sana. Um, just starting with Wayne, really. Wayne has been working for the business for over 20 years now. I've worked with him for uh, over a decade. From when I was just a young lad, um, he took me under his wing. So yeah, you know, great to have Wayne on board here. He's got a great wealth of knowledge around the security side of things, but also how the back end systems integrate and all sorts of other stuff. So it's really, really good to have on board. Um, we've also got a deal with us today. A deal is the product owner for a number of different things. Uh, Income management suite, which we'll be looking at today. Pay.net, which we'll be looking at today. Uh, he's also chip and pin, smart mobile, core secure plus loads of other different things. But um, Adil's, Adil's extremely knowledgeable around the product, as you would expect. He's the product owner from them. for them. Um, he's going to take us through uh, some demos, show us how some of the bits and pieces work, what the guys have been spending their time on, why the guys have been spending their time on the things they have and, um, and you know, just sort of taking you through the product. Um, the session today itself is going to be really geared up around the version 13. So we are going to cover version 13 income management. We're going to cover version 13 pay.net. We're going to go into some planned payment stuff. We're going to go into some of the new reporting features, some great stuff around uh, the new reporting suite within version 13, which I think is probably one of the highlights of the suite. Um, it's going to make everything easier for you, basically, without having to know specific coding structures and SQL and all that kind of thing. You'll be able to use the, you know, the, the screens that we make available to write powerful reports to sort of devolve those down to your users. So that's really good. Um, yeah, there's a few other bits and pieces in there, but rather than me talking, I think we'll we'll get straight to it. Um, I'm going to be manning the Q&A session as we run through today. I know from the last one of these version 13 sessions that we ran on Monday, uh, the Q&A will be pretty busy, so I'll try and keep on top of that. If you don't know about the Q&A, if you've not been on the Teams live session before, if you give your mouse a little wiggle, you should see on the screen you get like a toolbar thing. Um, three little dots on there. Usually there's a, a Q&A function in there. Ask away. You know, any anything you want to ask, uh, we don't see it unless we publish it. So you don't see it unless we publish it. Um, so it can be private if you want it to be private. We can push it out across the everybody that's on the session if it's a kind of common question that people are asking. So please do use that. Use that to ask us questions about this session, but please also do use it to ask us questions about upcoming sessions because we do have a new schedule of events we'll be posting out next week for the next month. Um, what you want to see, what's worked well, what hasn't worked well, really you know, any feedback about that kind of thing is great. We run these sessions for you guys. Um, we facilitate them, you know, to try and get information over to you, the things you want to know, because we obviously, you know, we're all working at home and we can't get out on site. So what I'm going to do, first of all, um, I'm going to pass over to Wayne just to give us a little bit of an intro into what he's going to do and then we'll get into his slides. So hopefully technology is working all right. Uh, Wayne, over to you. Thank you, James. Great intro, as always. Um, really appreciate the time that um, all the Pay360 customers have set aside today to have a quick look um, at the launch of um, version 13 of our product set. Um, and as James said, I've, I've worked for, for Pay360 now for over 20 years, and that this is really the first opportunity the business as a whole uh, has had to take a stand back and um, review the platform and services that we provide to our clients um, because they've, they've grown over that period, over the two decades that I've worked um, for Pay360 and they've become quite fragmented um, the design and build and delivery and methodology used for implementation for the services that we provide um, due to changes in the platform application uh, in security requirements has meant that um, it's it's certainly not designed and delivered at present 
with the versions as they stand to take the um, the best approach to deploying a simple, uh, easy to use, secure payment platform um, that has been developed uh, 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 by using a holistic approach. It's it's now, and this is two years in the uh, in the making. And one thing I'd like to do is take this opportunity to thank um, all of the developers, uh, the um, uh, the product owner, uh, the uh, the QA team specifically, but very, very importantly, all of those customers that have taken time into feeding back as to how they would like to see the application work and specifically the, the beta testing clients who've uh, obviously had an early view of the applications, but also been able to input in how they would like to see the applications work. And obviously for future releases of any applications that Pay360 provide, if uh, any of you are keen to get obviously early views and or would like to be involved with any of the uh, beta testing programs that Pay360 provide with its income management suite, please contact us uh, and we can loop you into the people that can let you join in there. So, um, so today uh, we're going to look obviously at uh, version 13 of the product set. And if you could just skip over to my slides, please, James, that'd be great. Um, yeah, sure. That's superb. Thank you. So obviously I've had an introduction myself, James and uh, and a deal. So we'll skip to the next slide. What I'm going to do is just sort of, you know, try and whet your appetite uh, with a few highlighted elements of functionality within the application, um, such as the custom report builder. Um, so as an integral part of the um, of the platform management information uh, for payments uh, and account information is is very, very important. Um, the ability to build them very, very quickly using the custom reports builder uh, through a platform that has now been rewritten and optimized for cloud deployment. So all of the all of the data processing and you know uh, heavy lifting for the application is done server side rather than um, through the client application um, is now very very simple to use uh, the ability to just pick select filter uh, configure uh, reorder data columns whilst creating reports um, is now a very very simple process there is no need to um, recode templates in the background using the R R RPT crystal templates um, uh, and even the sort of the the SSRS functionality and clients who've accessed data directly from the database are now taking a view based on the new reporting functionality and the ability to create your data presentation layer in so many different ways that the application by itself is now enough to ensure that, that that reporting ticks all of those management information boxes. We've also taken the opportunity to completely redesign the user interface so the way that AIM and Pay.net, because there is now a single logon for the service rather than having two different URL URLs and two different presentation layers, it's now a single beast. It's been redesigned to allow access pretty much from any device. So if you access from a tablet um, or if you access from a, a, a laptop, you will be able to interact with the platform and process payments and or you know get get reports, run jobs, um, all designed to meet the internal legislative requirement for WCAG. CAG. So it's fully accessible and meets those legal requirements that local authorities need to present both for uh, obviously external facing applications. So, the, you know, for your clients that are making payments on the Internet, but also for your staff. So internal applications have to meet these um, these standards as well. So uh, and a deal when he's going through the application, we'll, we'll, we'll show you some other functionality around how the application's accessed. And that's just an example of me. Um, a couple of days ago, processing um, some exceptions and transactions on my ancient iPad, which works very well. It was great, um, a, a good experience on the application. And as I said before, designed for deployment 
um, in the cloud, so accessible from anywhere. Ideal, uh, certainly, uh, given the current climate with working from home, um, very, very quick, quickly, uh, staff can be deployed in um, uh, areas that uh, uh, certainly they weren't working before, uh, and that change in environment can be accommodated with uh, the deployment of our platforms within the cloud. Sort of drilling into some of the more detailed elements of uh, the income management system, there's a great feature called process notifications, and this was a complete change in design and logic in the way the uh, the platform works. So historically, you would sit there, you'd run a report or run an import or an export, and you'd sit there and your eyes would glaze over whilst you're watching the screen and waiting for that particular job to finish. There are no more no more sort of experiences like that. There are no more waiting for reports to finish, no more waiting for the interfaces to complete, and no more lack of information based on the event. So um, there is now a process notification uh, bar that um, basically tells you th when things have started, when they're ongoing, and when they've completed. Um, it's, it's something we've designed based on feedback from users through the redevelopment of the platform itself. Um, there are some new modules available within pay.net as well. I'm, I'm going to focus on highlighting the plan payments module today, uh, but as you can see, and I'm not going to read through this entire screen because it's full of text, um, but there are additional counter receipting features. We've taken the opportunity to redesign pay.net to allow clients to take the decision as to whether they need to remove some of their legacy applications such as ACR, that's the counter receipting application. And one of the fantastic features I've seen added to the platform is the ability to send SMS and postal receipts direct from the payment screens. And that's using the uh, gov.uk service for local authorities, uh, which if you sign up for, I believe there are a, a number of free texts, transactions uh, and very, very cheap postal services uh, directly from that, uh, that central government service rather than using more expensive uh, local print services or, or you may have had limited access to internal print services. So uh, that's, that is a great bit of integration work that's been done by the development team. There is a new side cart. So whilst you're processing a transaction within pay.net, rather than building up a shopping basket of goods that that added sort of lines below the screen, which to be fair, uh, you know, showed information, but cab could could become quite complicated, specifically when you're doing a complex transaction. And this highlights and an, a deal. Hopefully we'll get chance to highlight and show this exactly how that benefits the user's experience when processing a payment and how intuitive that is and in its presentation level whilst processing complex transaction. And there it is just zooming in on the side cart itself and that gives me the ability to select the preferred receipt address. For example, uh, when you've got multiple items, you may want to select an individual receipt address specific for, for multiple items. Income reconciliation has been redesigned to enhance its already powerful features, but to expand its functionality to include the ability to reconcile against summarized totals based on much more. So, you know, it would have reconciled information based on line items from bank imports and uh, other summary totals. But with the reworking of the application, we can now do that based on pay code, merchant number, imports, cashier banking totals. It's now much, much for, more, more flexible. And there are some other granular um, uh, changes to that, um, that module within the application as well specifically designed to give a, a better user experience overall. So on that, because I'm sure we're all jumping up and down, wanting to see the application rather than me talking about that and, and looking at a number of slides, because that's what I did a couple of num or a number of months ago with JP and Mike Howard, our development manager at the user groups this year. In fact, that was probably one of the last opportunities we had to see you as a group of uh, a group of users. So let's take this opportunity uh, to hand back to um, James, who will introduce uh, a deal 
and we'll have a real demo of the version 13 application. No, that's great, Wayne. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, so some good stuff up and coming there. Hopefully you guys can see that there has been a lot of time spent on this. You know, it's been something that has been in the works for quite a while. Um, let's get straight to it. Let's hand over to Adil. Um, so, yeah, hopefully he can take us through some of the product stuff. Adil, over to you. Remember to unmute your microphone. Hello. Uh, has been introduced. Uh, I am the product owner. I think uh, before I start, I just want to highlight that um, in my previous role, I was on the other side where I would sit with the customers and go through their requirements. And then most of the requirements were met, but then some of them were a limitation on the product. And coming onto this side in my current role, it gives me that control. It gives me that power to bring the voice of our customers and, uh, and, and bring in those, those features that they really need in their day-to-day -day processing in, in, in their business. And so it, it, it gives me, it fills me with excitement when I am able to showcase uh, what we've been talking about with different customers. And now we have managed to um, put those features in the, into the product. Uh, so I will start with login. And I think you have um, probably familiar with the image. We'll probably look to change that. But um, you've got um, user password consortium is is now you have to type in because it is to 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 add more security. So login. I think uh, first thing you can do in in this uh, when you will get your hands onto it, you will you will notice that um, the, there are menus that are now on the left side whereas before they were at the top and there are also um, slightly different in structure. We have uh, logically uh, put things together. For example, uh, all, all, everything to do with reports is in under one menu. Everything to do with processing um, pro or process setup like imports and exports are under these menu items. So in my, in my time with the company, it's been nothing 10 years now or something like that. And I still struggle to find some of the menus. So what we've done is we've added a feature there where you can type in what you want to search for, for example, fund. And I search that and it bring me back with the menu items. So the first two where it says navigation, they're the menu items and then rest of them uh, wherever the, the fund is referenced to as a label on a form. And I can simply click on that and it takes me directly to that page. And it's, it, it also helps with if, for example, sometimes we get asked, how do we set up cashier banking? And we say, you, you set it up here, 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 but then that, that can get lost and then it gets confusing. But now you can just type in cashier banking and it will just lift all the fields uh, or labels or forms where it's referenced and and then you know these are the all the places where i have to set up cashier banking for it to start working so also you can um if, if you're not interested in all of the results you can simply use the filters up there so you're only interested in menu items um, or if you're interested in wherever references on the form, then you can do that. Uh, so so that's, that's really useful uh, for everyday user. The other thing we, we have done is uh, we've put together all the different parts of the applications into one sign, sign in, single sign on. It means previously you had to log into income management or pay.net separately. There were deployments, they were deployed separately as well, although they shared the same database. But now it's single deployment, single sign-in, and, and single database. So it's if if you're if you're in, if you're if you're hosting this in your own environment, so there's there's less less overhead on, on your IT and also there is um, Less, less confusion when you're installing your troubleshooting or anything like that. The, um, yeah, so the next bit I can show you is 
a deal. Sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, as this is a live event, I'm, I'm just going to dive in with a question we've just had through on the Q&A. We usually try and review them towards the end, but this one I think is really re relevant. A customer's just asked, can you tag pages you find? So is the, the ability to save and or create favourites within the platform? We cannot at the moment, but that's a very good suggestion. I can definitely take it with me and review it and then we can we can review it into adding it or into the next release uh, because this is going to be continuous development. Yeah, and, and that's yeah, it, that, 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 that's great because I mean that, that, that just, it's a it's a fantastic question and please ask more during the event as we're going through because um, the the application itself is using a new methodology that that um, a deal and the product team have brought to the way we uh, we deliver our platforms and it's using uh, an agile development uh, technique and I'm not a developer so I don't know exactly what that means but it sounds as if um, we can certainly react in a much faster way to uh, product enhancements if they certainly benefit the the entire client base um, rather than the older technologies where it, 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 development life cycles took a cons considerably longer time. Um, so we're, we'll be m much more reactive with this platform and this version moving forward. Hopefully you agree with that, Adil. Yes, and, and I think that's very important to also highlight that I think this product is built based mostly based on our customers' feedback. Uh, whenever they, 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 they felt that there is a need of certain feature or certain process or certain flow, we have added that. So it's, it's very important now because this, this product has been developed from scratch again. Uh, normally from the old technology to the new, it's normally a conversion by some third party company where you go to them and say, this is the old code and just convert it to the new code so that we're up to date with the, with the technology. But this it's not the case in this in this instance because we have reviewed every screen, every flow as we've developed. It's it's been done from scratch, so it's now very important that when when you do come across this application and and we get your feedback and and that's the only way we can enhance it and and make it um, applicable to your requirements. process of payment and so uh, continuing with the single sign-on this this you see payment is the pay.net application and you probably familiar with some of the menu names you've got account search and refund cash up and so on and then this is all income management so when I click on that I am now in pay.net without leaving the application and the, the, the other thing we've done in pay.net is previously uh, you saw the, the whole screen um, with name and address and reference and all that. But now, uh, but also you had different settings per fund. So maybe you wanted ref number two to be added when processing a transaction. And, and just, to, just to make that uh, a bit more um, so that you, you, you when you when you're changing funds it doesn't change the field so we've done it in a way where you select the fund first and based on your setting it draws that page and then we've got look up here uh, which has been enhanced you've got some filters uh, but i know which one i need to add so i'm going to select that I'm going to add the amount and I'm going to add that to the card. This is where Wayne was referencing in his slide the, the card that has been added here. And it's in constant view. You, it doesn't go away. Uh, it, it reduces the error where you may add uh, an item and then you forget about it uh, because you started talking to the customer maybe. And then later on, uh, you, you add another one and then process and then when you get the receipt you realize there is double transaction you've paid for. Um, so it's in constant view. Now I'm going to add another transaction and I'm going to show you the address feature. So I'm going to do another lookup. I'm going to select that. 
and this time you notice that the seat address is not ticked. Previously it was by default because that was the first transaction. But if I want to tick, uh, I use this as, as an address, I can do that. You notice that that's 274, this is 203. When I click on add, sorry, need to add the amount. Uh, click on add. Now you see that the address has changed here. This was the biggest problem um, before this version. When I say biggest problem, we, we received a lot of um, queries that um, it's not very clear when you when you, which address is going to be used on the receipt. So we need to we need to do some improvement, and and we have done that. So what what this this yellow color indicates is that this is the transaction that is using the receipt address, and and this is the actual receipt address that that you're going to be print uh, print on the onto the receipt. And so after adding two transactions. Um, there, there are other features, but they're the, the, the same as before. You know, suspend, delete all. So I'm not going to going to go into too much detail. Uh, so I'm going to move on to payments. Now you've got. Um, so this is a newly designed method of payment selection page. Before you had a drop down. We have now uh, put it on the page, all of them, uh, with some categorization. So you've got cash check, card, and then anything else that may come along will be listed underneath that. And you've got running total at the top there. So you always know that how much is remaining and how much has been paid. So just to demonstrate that, I'm going to select cash and I'm going to just add 10 pounds. I'm going to click OK. And now you can see that it says paid amount 10, remaining amount 10. And I've got a separate entry on my card for the uh, um, amount that I have just added, and it says cash. The next one I'm going to do is check, and so it automatically populates with the remaining amount, which is fine. I'm okay with that. I'm not going to enter anything else. And when I click OK, because that's the remaining amount, it's going to take us to the last page, which is the receipt page, and this is where you've got all different options, but mainly what's new here is ability to post receipt, or you can uh, enter the phone number and you can click on that SMS receipt. So you've got, you got a couple of options, or the, the classic one, which we always had, is email receipt, which is already there. Um, so that's, that's completing the transaction. Now I'm going to go into search and refund to, to look at this transaction and, and, and show you some features there. So again, going from this menu to search and refund. And this is the this is the new 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 design uh, of the search and refund. You've got um, some of the validations there that we've we've added. For example, if you if you enter uh, a from group number higher than which is two it, it will complain about that. Um, and you've got lookups, machine code, user code, some other things just to make a, a life a bit easy on day-to-day -day process. Because when you're doing this all day long, that the small enhancements make a difference. For example, I'm going to add first six digits of the card number and my cursor has automatically moved to the next field as opposed to uh, pressing the tab button or clicking into that field. So I'm going to get rid of that because I'm just going to search based on the date. And when I do that, you can see these are all the transactions that have come in from today. I just processed an import earlier. So these are the, this is the imported data and these are my transactions. So the ones that I have done, and if you, if, if you click on, if you can do right click on here now, which wasn't possible before, you have got some options at the top, but they are mainly to meet with um, WCAG requirements. But as you know, um, if most of the users are using mouse, then it makes sense to add some quick access, accessible ac action button. So just clicking on that gives me refund, reprint, merchant copy, more info. And it's clever in the sense that 
if you if if your merchant copy is switched off in your system settings, then you will not see that option. Or if reprint is not available um, because of your system settings, that will not be there. Or if the transaction has already been refunded, then again you won't see that. So so it again it is if if that if it is that um rule that we that we um following where do not let the user make a mistake and then tell them that you made a mistake we just we just avoid it by hiding these options uh, so there's less chance of making that and realizing this is not possible so on here we've got this more info some of the details are highlighted up there that that are mainly uh, those are the ones that you always pay attention to so they're, they're in bigger font and then rest of them are, are down below the um the main thing that i want to show here is the ability to filter transactions or, or manipulate the data set so that you you quickly get to what you want to search for so as you saw i just searched on the date and and now you didn't maybe you weren't sure of what the references that you were looking for or, or whatever the situation now you got the whole result set and then you can now click on these three dots on each column and it gives you microsoft excel style filters sorting uh, also grouping by so with filters you can see that it's got set of two dates i can i can click on that um, or just select one of them filter you can see it's straight away um, giving me the the required results and then you can clear by just pressing that and and it's um, gone back to to normal the other thing is if you let's say spend 10 minutes filtering and then you realize oh that's not what i wanted you can simply click on that reset button and it will take you back to the state that you originally got the got the data from um so the, i think that the star of the show or for certain reason would be uh just selecting that and then dropping it here and you can see that it's grouped here by um, that column if i get rid of that if i if i pick a more relative um example so let's say we want to group it by fund so you can see that it's straight away i've got all the items here against fund 01 and empty and the next thing I want is a uh, pay code so against fund against pay code what is it that i've got so i do that and then it tells me under fund 01 I've got this many by pay code 04 and this many by pay code mixed payment and so on. And now I can, like I said, click on that and you've gone back to how it started. And, and that's, that, that is absolutely great, Adil. And I, I appreciate the, the time and effort from the development team and the feedback we've had from customers in, uh, in the design, in how this management information screen has now been um, redeveloped i mean based on the fact that that customers used to have to go and create you know templates for reports and filter and put a lot of design work into them and they only used the search and refunds screen specifically for that just for searching and refunding hopefully everybody can see from sort of the flow you've just described um how powerful th this part of the application is now so it as far as management information is concerned this certainly adds to the the power of the platform over and above the reporting module which i mean we'll, we'll be coming on to later on anyway which is greatly enhanced but it also allows really quick access to data on demand and the abil ability to filter and show and view in such a way that um the need for the reporting features uh, isn't as great because you can you can get that information ridiculously quickly through through this simple screen yes yes absolutely okay i think that's uh my session for for now uh hand over back to that's great Thanks, Adil. Ho hopefully you can still hear me. My um, my microphone seems to have gone a bit strange, but um, 
Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, really appreciate that deal. Great stuff. Um, we've had plenty of questions through as we've been going. That's great to see. If um, if anyone else has got anything they want to add, uh, let us know. I'm aware, you know, we've been at this for over half an hour now. It might be getting a bit fidgetal. Um, hopefully that's not the case. We've got some great stuff to come this afternoon in, in sorry, up to this afternoon in terms of uh, plan payments module and some other bits and pieces. So I'm going to hand you back over to uh, to Wayne, first of all, who's going to go into some of the plan payment stuff um, and kind of take you through that. And then we'll get back to a deal afterwards into reports. Thanks. Over to you, Wayne. That is great. Appreciate that. Thank you once again to James. And yeah, your mic was absolutely fine. Um, you didn't have to rely too heavily on your super expensive Bose probably got them for Christmas headphones and microphones. So I've got my cheap plastic ones and they never let me down. In right. Which the battery's gone flat for me, which is why I now don't have them anymore. But yeah, thank you. Yes. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, so hopefully you can all see the log on screen. I'm going to show you quite quickly um, uh, an uh, element of the platform and the module that was driven initially uh, you know, a number of years back from a specific market um, and that was education. Um, but we do see and have been asked for the functionality uh, across markets. So, so, you know, specifically housing and uh, and local government, whereby they see a great opportunity to be able to gain a commitment to pay without the additional or traditional risk that you see associated with a direct debit. So you'll always get a, a set demographic or a certain type of person that doesn't trust the direct debit feature. Now that's no fault of theirs in any way whatsoever. They are probably managing their cash on a week to week basis. And, and based on the fact that if a direct debit fails, there is a monetary penalty there to both the customer and, and the merchant, so the organization as well. So you will always get a set percentage of people who will commit to pay recurring payments across the piece with direct debit because they're very comfortable with that. Others don't seem to have the opportunity to set up the, those same types of plans. Now, the plan payments module uh, or plan payments management within um, pay.net and the income management suite is very, very powerful, very, very flexible. And we've now designed a user interface to allow you to manage that based on individual um, line of business need. So I'm gonna go through sort of a scenario to show you the flexibility of that. So if we take a logical approach to, I want to set up a, uh, a payment plan for a line of business. I've been approached by the manager of Garden Waste Services let's say they've already got direct debit set up annually for you know, if, if they're lucky 50 60 percent of their uh, citizens who've taken advantage of of getting their grass cuttings and branches collected but they're paying for that on a on an annual basis through direct debit they've taken the business decision to offer the same service to their uh, their customers but give them the opportunity to pay, for example, quarterly or say monthly against uh, the service, but they're able to set up that agreement to pay through a credit or debit card. So the first thing I'm going to do for that line of business is create a uh, business specific template. And you can see I've, I've done this a number of times, so I'm going to add this from scratch. It has to have a unique code. X garden waste one. Oop, spelling's terrible. And we're going to call this quarterly. And then I am going to select the type of payment plan that I want to associate with this description. And as you can see, you have a number of choices. I'll, I'll click on each one to show you the differences. Weekly gives me a number of options within the plan schedule. Payment collected on the day that the payment uh, plan is set up, on day of sign up or on a specific day. You can allow the payer to choose whether that gives you a drop down list of Monday through Friday or Saturday to Sunday, depending on which days they want to make the payment. Uh, take the first payment on 
the next occurrence of the chosen day. So if they selected Friday, it would be the next Friday that payment is taken and then a duration. So it will then calculate based on if you select must be paid by the end of the year, it'll calculate based on uh, the duration or it could be a fixed number of payments. The next option down is monthly and we have very similar plan schedule options. Uh, in exactly the same way. But what I'm going to do, because this is very specific based on the um, requirement from the line of business, is on specific dates. Now that removes the options tablet because when I press next, it's going to give me the opportunity when I select four installments to select those installment dates. What it's done, rather than define an amount is split the outstanding debt by percentage which fits perfectly if you are charging people different amounts based on profiles an example of that would be um, you know, rent where where people get rent benefits uh, or, or that type of thing or if you want to charge for the same service for different profile customers so if it was a, uh, a standard council tax payer you'd get one amount and if it was someone who was a local business it may be different but you can create a single plan and split the outstanding debt by percentage so i'm going to select the dates now so the first date is going to be the end of this month 29th of may followed by uh let's go for august uh we'll say august 31st and then let's we'll go forward to December 31st, New Year's Eve. Nobody will notice the payment comes out and then followed by um, April, April 21. So that splits the debt, gives a, a total 100% of that debt over those four dates. Now, the flexibility of this is retained even post template setup. And I'll show you an example of this when we process a payment. So if I wanted to change that plan either now or once the template is set up on a case by case basis, I can do that. So I'll submit that and create the template, which is great. Once the template's set up, we can then start using it within pay.net. So if I go to payments, I'm going to search fund code from a list, type in the ref reference number for the payment service, or it could be a drop down. If it was a miscellaneous fund, say for garden waste, and then you're allocating the income to the correct cost center, the amount based on the drop down could be fixed, or you could type in the amount. It depends what what you need. So I'm going to say this is uh, 125 pounds for the service, which is quite a lot for garden waste. Um, I'm glad mine isn't that expensive. Um, and from there, you capture any associated narrative, capture name, address, details, so on and so forth. Press next at that particular point, and then I'm now going to select the template that we just created, which was down towards the bottom of the screen, X Garden Waste Quarterly. Select and update, and then calculate based on the outstanding debt. That's given me the four dates, and rather than a percentage, it's calculated that £125 over the 25% quarterly payments is 31 pounds 25. So I can, if I wish, change the date that that first payment is coming in. Or I can change the amounts. I can add installments, remove installments. It is very, very flexible. And this template once created is available for staff to use self service, but it also can be presented in the same way using the same logic and the same template that's configured within pay.net online using your internet payments platform. So you can direct your customers to an e-com self-service facility where it, it can also take advantage of things like digital wallets so on and so forth. So from there, I shall just press next, complete the summarized uh, schedule that will take me through to the method of payment screen. In this instance, I'm just using a traditional card payment page, but this would then take advantage of the secure implementation methods you've used within your environment. So for example, call secure, um, uh, uh, something that, that masks this card number detail. But just for demonstration's sake, I'm gonna type in the card number, expiry date and security code and then verify this payment against the amount. This is on loopback, so it's just going to come back and allow me 
to type in the authorization code. OK there, and that's it. The transaction is now complete. That gives me a schedule ID. That said schedule ID is important. I can then find that transaction based on any further inquiries or queries. I mean, you can search for those transactions that have run through um, your application by, by by searching for schedules of any type. I could just type name and address in there. You've got the schedule ID there as well. When I search, that comes back with the schedules that are set up of any type. Um, as a member of staff, I can do a number of things, update the address, update the email. I can click on the plan that's set up. Um, I can add installments, delete installments. So it gives you the flexibility post installment plan setup to actually change that on demand uh, from a customer, which is which is great news. It gives that flexibility and you can filter and search based on things like reference number, email ID, postcode, gives you all the key functionality that you would need based on the variation of conversation and workflow that's happening when you're interacting with that particular customer. So that's sort of the plan payments module within version 13. And what I really wanted to highlight within that was the flexibility that that gives you for planned payments and arrangements with customers and getting a commitment to pay, uh, which, which obviously gives you a con continuity of service and ensures cash flow is retained. If payments ever fail using this service, there isn't that concern or worry over being charged by the bank as you would with a failed direct debit. So it is easier to get that commitment from a customer to sign up for the service. And it, it, it supports all of the communication stuff in the background. So if a, a payment is failed, it sends out an email to the customer and to your staff. So you can then proactively manage that debt and discuss, discuss obviously the, you know, the, the, the social situation that's affected that payment and then, you know, and it gives you the tools to then, you know, pause a plan, recalculate a plan um, and, and retain that commitment to pay. So a very powerful tool. So that's, that's sort of me done on that. I'm going to sort of hand back to James if I can um, and we'll continue the session. Hopefully everybody can see us again. Um, sorry about that there. A quick Google suggested that there is a bit of a problem with Teams Live at the moment. I know um, I know a few people have left the session, but we still got, you know, we still got quite a lot of people online here. Um, we'll continue from where we were. Um, Wayne had just finished his session around the, the plan payment stuff. And um, yeah, what we'll do is we'll, we'll carry on from where we are. And if you um, if you want to see the session again, let us know. We are going to run another one of these sessions anyway. Um, we definitely will now sooner rather than later, given there's been a bit of a platform based problem. We have also got a copy of this on YouTube. The last one we did on on Monday. If you want to see that in its entirety, then come back to us through the Q&A panel, please, um, and we'll make sure you get a copy of that. So apologies about that, but hopefully we can pick up from where we were. Um, I'll pass back to Adil, who's going to go into uh, some reporting things, and I will check on another PC here at home uh, just to see if this is still broadcasting correctly. But fingers crossed, if you can see this properly and it's working, please do drop us a message in the Q&A. Um, or those that have been emailing me directly, drop me an email, let me know just, just so I know this is definitely coming out properly. Uh, right, Adil, I'll pass back to you. I'll put your desktop on the screen and we'll go from there. Again, apologies and uh, thanks for bearing with us. Thanks, James. There were a few questions around uh, the, the ability to restrict users from certain menus uh, in the Q&A. So I will just highlight that although this is a single sign on and for myself, you see all the menus, but yes, it is possible to remove search and refund, cash up, any menu that you want to remove for a particular user. And uh, also if you want to just have, just give access to just income management or just pay on it, that's possible. Uh, it's, it's, it's through the security settings, menu settings in the system. So, so that's, that's, that's entirely possible. So reports, um, whoever I've spoken to in, in my life <laughs> in this job, um, they've all they've all they've all struggled with with reports. And that is the one thing that we wanted to address in, in this version. Um, so what we have done is given the ability to create your own report uh, that you want to 
create without having to uh, mess around with templates or third party tools um, to to create those templates, pay license fees, uh, or once you've created the template, then you have to give it to us to upload somewhere or, or, or get in touch with us so that we could tell you which folder to put it in if, if it's on-site deployment. So all that we've taken away so that it's, it's simple and quick for anyone without any technical knowledge to go in there and create your own report. Um, these options above custom report that you see are, are, are for the existing reports with the standard ones that come with the system. They have been converted as well to SRS, so they, they look modern and there's the, 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 the structure behind it has been changed from being crystal to SSRS, so that's improved as well. But the main thing is what I want to show here is, is custom reports. So I go in here. So this is the one I was um, creating earlier, uh, but I will just start again. So I will give it a code. Sorry, just, just like we do with any thing that we create in this system, we give a code and description so that um, you understand it or recognize it when, when you come across it or anyone that sees it. Uh, so page amount, shall we say. And after that, I'm going to select my uh, source of the data. So what we have done here is uh, we've given some of the key data tables where transaction data flows through. And what we have done is also uh, done the, the, the joins with another table. So for example, if you wanted to bring back fund code and the amount and the reference from the main holding table, we all refer to, I'm sure most of you will know that term, uh, but, but the, that transaction only holds fund code. It doesn't hold description. Description is in another table. So th there is a join automatically done in the background between the holding table where the transaction data is and, the, and another table where the fund, fund uh, configuration is so that when you choose holding, it will, it will bring back the other tables so you can simply click on description and add it to your report because most of us may not know uh, or recognize the fund code, but we all know what council tax is uh, and, and, and the code for that council tax fund probably is CT. Um, so I'll select that one. And this is again, restrictions, uh, if you only want to allow certain people to this report. So once adding that, um, this creates the header of the report. So I'm going to click on submit and configure so that it can take me directly to um, to the to the to the screen where I can now configure my report. So by default, um, you get um, the the primary table here, which is the holding table because that's what I chose. But I want to now add the description from the fund, description from pay, maybe description from machine as well. And now you can see I've got um, the the view of other tables. Now you're probably wondering why am I only seeing description on the other tables because they do hold other other configuration information, but from what we know, that they're, they're not relevant for reports. However, this is open to um, the feedback from from yourselves. And if you if you think there are other things, or or overall with this with this flow, anything that you think we can improve, um, yeah, please please get in touch. Um, there are a deal, and and there are questions coming through now. I've just just had one. I just thought it was relevant, so so we'll yeah. um, we'll ask that if we can. Yeah. Um, a client has asked, and I'm sure the more they get their hands on this, the less relevant it will be. But there is a relevance, you know, if they put a lot of effort and time into this. So a customer's old reports, the custom reports that they've created within their within their plan platform, will they will they still be able to be used? based on what they've created within their existing infrastructure. So we're, we're looking at um, a, an upgrade, for example, and a project to migrate to version 13 and deploy the application which was on site into the cloud. Would that project include you know, the, uh, the retention of the reports and management information that they've got with their existing version, say version 11? Yeah, so so that, that existing report they have is in Crystal and yes. it will be converted into SSRS. So it will it will form part of your 
listing of your standard reports in the system. This 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 is not based on any template, so it will not convert into this. However, it will come into convert into SSRS and be part of their um, standard reports in the system. Thank you. Okay, so in in here I've got list of fields that uh, I want to add. So I want to add um, reference. So I can just type in. I can have ref number one, ref number two. Then I want to add uh, amount. Not that one. Tran amount. I add that. I add transaction date, and then I add description from fund and pay. So that's that selection of my data uh, fields. And then the next one is just the ability to give it your own descri uh, description of each field. Maybe you want to call the trend amount base as amount only, and this needs to be referenced. And this option tells me if, if I want this these fields to be visible on the report. Uh, or drag and drop, and um, yes, I want to take the transaction date to the top, and I want to keep ref number from here to here. So I'm happy with that. Uh, obviously, as you see, there are these buttons as well to to do to move them up and down. This this is to comply with with accessibility the regulation. Um, so moving on, I, and I see that a deal. Sorry to butt in again, yeah. as um, one of the major benefits for those customers that have had historically had to access the data directly using either SSRS or or another reporting tool, yeah. and um, within you know the uh, either uh, SQL script or statement or a, a, a stored procedure then you know pulled the data and then created aliases within a sql script and yeah. had to know how to code that so this gives them that key functionality without any coding skills yeah. whatsoever yeah that, 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 that was that was that's why we, we we wanted to target simplicity in this and we we could spend we could spend months and months and make it so complex that it's it's not um understandable by anyone even yeah, myself not, not usable you're absolutely yeah, right yeah. yeah yeah so okay um then the next bit is adding your criteria to say if fund is this then then return if if pay code is this then then return back results so that's what this is so i can do fund code in and i have a lookup i can select multiple funds or you can search here as well, which wasn't kind of possible before. Um, update, so you've got the, those selections there. And then if I move on to having another set, which is, let's say, import code equals, and then you've got list of your imports, and I can select that one. Now, you can say or select if, if, if this 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 filter needs to be prompted every time you run the report, or or it just needs to be a default, and, and don't bother with 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 prompting for this again. So I can just untick that, and then every time I run a report, it will just ask me which import code. I mean, it will show me the default selection which I've chosen here, but it will still confirm to me that or or, or present it to me that this is a criteria that I'm going to 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 use to run the report, and at, at that point I can change it. But if I don't want to, then I can just untick both of these and it will not prompt. Um, and then the final one, which is the very good one, is the ability to preview uh, your report, how it will look when you will actually run it. Previously, this wasn't possible. It was only after you have spent some time in maybe a, a third party tool, you have created a template, it's gone, come to us, we've, we've uploaded it somewhere, and then you run the report after a week and then you realize oh i'm missing this or or this doesn't look right and then back to square one again so with this um you can see visualize how it looks also uh, it is uh, if i drag and drop this transaction there you can see it's taken effect straight away and uh, or, or if i wanted to say not visible 
And so that one is gone, transaction date is gone, um, but it's still part of the report. So that's, that's how, uh, obviously it's taken time for me to, to, to get through these steps because I'm explaining, but if I was to do it without any conversation or anything, it can be completed within a minute or two. Uh, it's very quick and, and, and easy to create a report now. And, and, it, and, it, and it supports uh, PDF uh, and, and Excel. Uh, and, and with Excel, you can then um, convert it into any format that you want, whether it's CSV, text or, or anything like that. And to deal, we're, we're still able with these new advanced reports to be able to add them into the automation tools within the income management system so we can create a job schedule that job to create you know one of the reports that you've just indicated there either a, a pdf or an excel document and then automatically email that to um a predefined you know, member of the management team within the organization on yes. on on a weekly daily basis yes absolutely uh the, the other thing that i think or, or that's a good point because i want to expand on that to say uh, anything in this application um we, we 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 would like to or we we have tried to automate obviously there are elements that you cannot but process wise uh, the automation has been improved as well so before when you were setting up a, a scheduled job uh, there was a, a lot of uh, ambiguity in terms of what options are available for me and what are not so when i when we were going through this redevelopment um, obviously, I have spent so much time with this application, but then I was still learning a few things in the scheduled jobs that, that have been available and, and no one knows about it or never utilized it. So, so we took this opportunity to highlight those so that when whoever is setting up a job, they know that these are the features available for them uh, to, to utilize when they're setting up a job. Uh, and, and automation is the key because that's what saves us time when we're doing day to day. Uh, processes so that we can focus our effort somewhere else rather than spending time on 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 executing these tasks. Um, so that's that's the report. I'll uh, show you the just looking at my list notifications, and I will do that by doing the imports. So if I go into process import. And I have this one. Now, previously, we when we process the import, I, I have sat with, with with few customers, and and if they're doing it interactively, as in not through scheduled jobs, um, they would run the import, and then they will go into a monitor, uh, process monitor, and then see whether it's completed or not. Um, so, so so that that was quite 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 painful, as in you constantly pressing a button on the monitor to, to see if it's completed or not. So, so what we've done is, if I click on uh, process batch, which is my file that I took from here and imported it, and I just got a notification there that process is queued. And then what we have here is, is the um, notification panel in which you can see that um, just at 12.08 by I'm using Wayne's login <laughs> um, to that it, it, the 25 records have been processed. And, and this notification is available to whoever has um, menu access to import. So if, if someone who doesn't have access to import, um, they will not see this notification, but who anyone who has will see because this 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 process is is shared by the by the by the system it's a system process it's not a user process so uh, for example in, on our windows machine uh, our notifications are just for ourselves no one else sees that but this is an import it's only done once so it only made sense to make this available to everyone uh, who logs into the system and has access to it so that they do not go and import that 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 file again although we do have um, measures in place to to stop that, like uh, duplicate file check and all that. But it's it's just it just makes sense to stop them before trying that. Uh, but if you're running reports and they are um, obviously reports are only for the users themselves. So if I've run a report, then I will 
see my notification only no one else will see it in in their system and and, and once you run the report you can download it from this uh, notification the ones that are completed the ones that are failed obviously you can just click on that and it disappears but the ones that are completed i can just simply click on that and it will download the file in into um it, through my browser just like we do with anything when we browse to a website and download something uh, so it's, it's as simple as that so coming back to then import so that's my import done there now the next step is the uh, batch and these are all my batches that that i have been processing and there are quick action buttons which weren't there before you had to click on something and then click on process batch or something something similar with this it's again the, these little little uh, enhancements uh, to to make life easy so i can just click on delete or process i'm going to process and you now see that that the, the three dots action button from there has disappeared because again it's a shared process we don't want anyone else at the same time logging in and, and clicking on that again and and, and 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 making it wrong for the system so um again when it's completed it will come up here that this has been completed and you've got um again user and the date and time so this leads me naturally to exceptions now like i said before about custom reports i think exceptions is the another area where we receive a lot of queries and and and, and suggestions for improvements the time it takes the the configuration and things like that so i'll just i'll just go through this in detail uh, if i select the so these are all my batches that have been processed and out of each batch some of them have dropped into exceptions and I can see the count and the value. So if I go into one of them now, previously when I have sat with some customers and they're and they're doing exceptions processing and they're, they're sitting there all day going through these exceptions, and it is a it is a time-consuming process because what you're doing is if someone's made a payment where they didn't quote their reference, and the only thing you've got on exception is a name, then you need to go into log into other systems maybe counter tax system or business rate system uh, and, and, and search the name and then and then find the reference to that person put that in here and, and then allocate the payment correctly and and it was it's lots of clicks uh, so to, on average you you make maybe spending um two minutes three minutes on one transaction so what when we start to design this our idea was that what is that we can do within our system to, to make that person spend less time. So one thing that I noticed with one of the users when I sat with them, they used to um, do this, where kind of bringing them together so that they, whenever they come to the screen, they can maybe see VAT code, uh, which is in the view, uh, whereas rather than doing this all the time, so that's saving them one click or, or drag off this, this bar. So what we've done to to address that is column filter so this is user based um, if i've done this it will only affect me it will not affect the view of another person who's processing exceptions so i can simply deselect all of them and for my exception investigation shall i say i'm only interested in pay reference uh, narrative maybe address and postcode Submit now. I only see that I, I, it doesn't it doesn't overload me with all the rest of the information that I don't need. So so that's that's saved now. So where if I log out and log back in, it will still be there, which is really useful. Um, so if I now select that, so this is another place where by default we had one code reference ledger code, just the default one. But then again, you wanted to change. The, um, the 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 fields that you 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 um, edit and uh, maybe you 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 get uh, an import which has always 10 15 20 transactions and it's only the 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 pay code that needs changing or the or the VAT code needs changing so what we have done is um, given a, a setting in in a, another um, another screen where you can in 
there. Um, so you can go in there and you can you can select just like I did for the listing. You can select which which columns or fields you see on this screen. So if you only want to see, um, obviously there has to be some default ones because without those the transaction will not be complete. But you can add and remove, for example, name because name is not part of your primary um, set of transaction data. Or you can add uh, address here or remove address here. So, so that's that's really useful. The other thing here is is notes. Um, they were there previously in, in previous um, versions, but they, they didn't track um, the history of of your notes. So, for example, uh, I am working on exceptions and it's coming to five o'clock. It's time to go home. I've done some work. I've I've made some progress. I've found the reference in another system, but I just need to confirm something in another system. So then I can put a note in that my progress has been uh, so far or, or whatever I want to write and then save note and it tells me that it's been saved by this user at this date and time. The so next day, if I'm on leave and Wayne's coming back to, to carry on with exceptions, he can then um, look at that note and, and not spend the same or, or, or make the same effort that I have done uh, um, and, and just carry on from where I've left and then Put his notes in, or just and do the uh, reference correction, which I'll just copy because it, it does validate. Um, select the pay code, the T code, and then update, and that's gone. Um, so that's the exception. Uh, one more thing I want to show here is the uh, language change or label change, shall I call it. Uh, previously, there was no facility to, to change your, I just logged in out. Uh, you, can, you, you can now go into this, this menu here and you can click on change language and select let's say Welsh update. Now if I go into my listing you can see that um, the labels have, have changed straight away. Just to illustrate that again I go into it, click on English again and you can see that it's taken effect. This is throughout the application. Now, now you're probably thinking that's that's okay, that's easy to just click on that and change it. What about the implementation? The implementation is very easy as well. So there's a when when this is deployed, there is a separate folder called assets in there. You've got multiple files, so you can have Spanish in there, Welsh in there, English in there, and it's just, it, it, the, the English one comes as default, um, that, but then we can have translation done um, and, and, and drop a file in there and then, as many files that you can drop in there, they will be available. So I've got three files in there. That's why I see three options here. But if let's say language is not an issue for you, you maybe want to change the label. Um, maybe in your organization, fund is not fund, it's item or something else. So you can go into that file and then just control and find and, and replace fund with item. Save that file. Come into the come into this application, and that change will be will be done straight away. You will see wherever you see font code, you will see item instead. It's, it's that easy. And and with files, if if you get the translation done, I mean, I, I'm not I'm not familiar with Welsh or or let's say Spanish, but I think what we do is in those cases we work with our customers um, to get the translation done and. and once you've got the translated file, you can just drop it in there and, and off you go. You don't even need to come to us to, to do that change. I, th I think, Adil, you've, you've really hit the nail on the head with your description there. And one thing it has shown, <clears throat> not that I'm trying to uh, do our own sort of configuration teams and, and product specialists out of a job, but it does show that the, the application itself has now been redesigned to be more of um, a business management application, an overall suite that allows um, obviously processing payments, but also a, a lot of configurable 
control of the way the application is now presented to to the users uh, and it's flexible in such a way that it's it's now no longer that static income management system that um the, the, you know the, 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 that is configured specifically to fit a um a local authorities requirements given the traditional way that they worked um and now that they do need to be more flexible and be seen as businesses that interact with with you know uh, local businesses and, and other organizations especially given you know the digital agenda around you know shared services for example these kinds of features within the platform gives them that core flexibility to be able to you know create an environment that is suitable for all all businesses of all types including those that local authorities may want to work with within you know the, the, the future as the future seems to be changing quite considerably very very quickly and I just wanted to take you back in time just a moment based on a question that we had from okay. uh, one of our customers and that was uh, on um, uh, exceptions processing and um, don't know whether I just published it or not. Bear with me a second. I think mm -hmm. I possibly dismissed that one because I said I was just about to ask a deal and then pushed it off to one side. Uh, yes, so in exceptions, and I, I believe there is or would be a report available for this. Can you see the notes that you've saved with an exception anywhere once the transaction has been committed and posted so is there uh, an exceptions reporting uh, facility that allows us to see that notes based data post exception that's, that's an interesting question because um, according to our understanding notes uh, are there whilst you're pros i mean investigating or processing reception once it's been um, corrected mm -hmm. and posted it's probably not relevant. However, I can I can check on that and 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 get back to you, or or we can review it and then add it so that it's part of the transaction, which it isn't at the moment. Yeah, um, and which I understand. Yeah. I also understand the reason for asking the question. So, if, you know, from an audit perspective, if the customer wanted to see the reasoning behind why yeah. the exception had been processed and sent off to this particular account or this particular finance code, then once it's submitted and gone, let's say they would sent it to the wrong area and they just wanted to have a look at the reasoning behind that without having to speak to six or seven different people, that yeah. data set and that report would be would be quite useful, definitely. It, it will be easy to add because the, the, the notes are still there. It's just they're not much to that transaction. So stop, stop using the word easy. But I, I absolutely understand that. No, it's great. it does sort of allude back to your agile development technique yeah. on the yeah. platform. So that's that is great. Um, I know, given time as well, we are sort of, sort of drawing towards the end because we did have that delay uh, towards the middle with the technology on the Teams platform. We do apologise for that, but we don't control the Microsoft infrastructure. Um, so was there anything you wanted to sort of close no. with the deal or? I think I was I was done um, in there anyway. Um, actually, now that you said it, <laughs> um, in our uh, previously, as, as you may have come across in some of the areas, uh, when when we when we're uploading the logos, previously we had to rely on um, our software engineers or uh, or someone with technical knowledge who understands where the logos go in the folder. Uh, we have come away from that and given the users the ability to upload their logos. So I can just simply click on that, select a file from my desktop, and it will upload that logo here. Not just for that, for that, also for for receipting um, as well. So if I go in here, you can see that I've got a logo already uploaded. But I can I can select another one simply and add it into uh, into uh, and use it for the receipt. And it goes back to what you were saying, Wayne, that um, we we we're, we're giving more control to the to the to the users. 
so that they're not relying on us um, for everything. Superb, thank you. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we hand back to the host. Yeah, thanks for that, Adil. Um, much appreciated. So, a couple of things really. Firstly, like Wayne says, sorry about the technology issue halfway through there. I know we lost 20% of the people that were on. Um, I think one of the standout questions we've been asked over and over again is, um, can you have access to this video afterwards? Absolutely, yeah. Drop us a message through the Q&A, uh, away from who your account manager is, that sort of thing. We'll make that link available. Um, alternatively, contact your Pay360 contact, ask for the, the information. Just a couple of slides really from me, I guess, in, um, in closing for this. Hopefully what you've seen demonstrates there has been a lot of work's gone into this. Um, we, you know, we know with things like the, the Silverlight platform coming to end of life, um, October 21, it means this type of functionality, you know, it is something that's needed. Every, everybody's going to have to look to do this. But actually, rather than just having to do it, it's been a perfect opportunity to make some changes and make it better. So being able to do this now on a tablet, like Wayne's demonstrated there, cross browser so you know i myself i'm a, a mac user being able to run this in safari and stuff like that make, you know makes my life certainly from a, a demonstrative sort of perspective a lot easier the functionality um is fantastic hopefully you can see that in in what the guys have showed you just um move the slide on for me Wayne. thank you so yeah some of the stuff you've seen there if you looked at um how things kind of were with your your previous versions and how things look now um, there's a massive difference. You know, things are in the right place where they need to be, easy to find. Really, one of the, one of the standout features for me when we were given uh, an opportunity to play with this product was, like a deal showed you, clicking in the box and searching for a screen you want. I've been using this for 11 years or something now, the, the income management suite, and like a deal, I still can't remember where everything is in there. I try and find it and I look in the wrong place and it might get moved or, so now with the facility of searching for those screens and those fields, it's great. It means I can just, you know, find the, the thing that I need easily, quickly, make a change to it and off I go. Um, I think it's a really, really good product and credit to the guys that, you know, they've put a lot of work in it, into it. So. I guess in summary, yeah, just from me, um, thanks a lot for taking the time today to join us. Um, we're aware everybody is busy and trying to juggle their own personal and, and you know professional lives. So thanks a lot for that. Sorry again about the issues that we've had. If it's something that you want to see more of, if you want to see some more version 13, um, some, some more version 13 functions, things it can do if you've got questions about it. We have got a whole programme of events moving forward through the next month or so. Um, they, those dates will be coming out shortly. If there are things you want to know about, please do contact your Pay360 contact or us through the Q&A section here. We'll make sure we get all that stuff out to you. Um, and I guess from me and the guys, really, thanks a lot for your time. Appreciate it.